Okay, now this piece here is ready to break off. I've got it real thin all the way around. The reason why I use a file instead of a hacksaw, because I know people are going to ask me, is you can't do that hacksaw and get it fine like this without tearing it up and warping it. I'm going to give you a close view at the end. This is how I get my close shots. Let me see the end here. Cut in. Now all these little burrs have got to be cleaned up. And here's what I've got to show you. On this side here, when you file, you want to file it out. And I'm going to show you something about a file to get rid of all of this. And then on the outside, we're going to file like this. But what direction? There's a lot of directional properties. So I'll show you one more thing here. On a file, we got lines that cut. And they're at an angle. They go this way, not this way, or straight across. They go this way. We're going to use these to our advantage. Now, seeing as on this side they're going this way, I'm going to do this on the piece that I'm after anyway. Now I'm looking at them, they're going like this. I want to push that to the outside, and I'm just going to slowly move and turn this get rid of what I have now I'm going on the outside which is pulling all the little burrs from the outside so there's nothing sticking out I'm at an angle here what I want to do is make sure nothing of that first metal sticks up on the outside of this or on the inside. Hello needle nose pliers. Light pressure, not much. Just going to give it a quick turn to get those things to stand up. And one more time from the inside, I'm going to go out. But pretty much I'm on this edge. Notice, remember, these are this way. So when I go like this, it's still pushing them out. Then I'm going to come back over here and get these. Now this edge ought to be real clean and ready. And I'm going to do the same thing on the on the uh, piston itself. Notice how much how much cleaner the edges look on that. I know it's not a perfectly straight cut, but there's no burrs, nothing to catch your finger, nothing sharp. And I'm going to put this back in the package after I clean it off with alcohol to keep keep it from tarnishing from the oils of my fingers. I'm Scott Brown, Greenwind and other home energies. Okay, and now that I've got this piece, I'm going to take the uh, burrs off of this. One thing you can do, one finger on top, fingers on the side, slide it back and forth, turn it, turn it, oops, don't want to scratch up the side. You don't want to grab this real tight. You don't want to press down very hard. Just let the file do the work. Then, like I said before, because these lines are going like this, when I pull like this, it's going to be trying to pull out from the end. A little twist, a little twist, a little twist, a little twist. And get rid of all the burrs. There's a sharp edge on the edge. I'm going to get the stuff from the inside. I'm going to go like, I want to, don't want to drag the front edge here. I want to drag the back edge over here. Now we'll turn all this out. And then, just go like this on the paper. Notice it'll, act, it'll look like lead, like you're writing. You'll see some lines on here in a minute. The paper wears it down. It gives it a nice, fine, polished edge. You know, it's just not tearing my paper because I've got the burrs off. I can do it rather quickly these days before it used to take me about... 15 20 minutes. Check this outer edge. And that is smooth. Glides and slides. I feel nothing grabbing my finger. Wonderful. I got one little piece inside here. I just broke it off. Wonderful. Now I clean this up with alcohol. We're going to make a piece of, uh, take a piece of rod, stick it inside with a little bend on the end and a loop at the top. 
Then I'll set it up for the linkage and we'll fill it up with epoxy or some uh, Permatex or even fiberglass if you want anything you put in there that hardens and fills up You just can't have it on the outside All right, we'll be right back. I'm Scott Brown green wind and other home energy. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with green wind and other home energies well you gotta make a piston we're gonna fill it with epoxy I already did this one and got a uh, piece of wire up in it. I'm gonna show you how to do that first off you take a piece of coat hanger I'm gonna use white so it shows up better on the camera and basically you grab it with your needle nose pretty close to the end but not where it's gonna bend everything and then you just get your fingers in there though Pat. take it on a bend around Take it almost all the way on the loop to where you got about that much. Then you want to take a piece of coat hanger and stick it in the hole. Get your little vice grips. Squeeze her down real close to her. And then, when you got that close, this one's a little bit sloppy. You want to bend it so that hook is in the middle. Mm -hmm. go and you want to measure your piston you say you want your hook to stick up about that far or real close and put your thumbnail right about where you want that bend take your pliers grab it there and back up just about that much of the thickness of the coat hanger and then make a bend make it 90 degrees or better this is to keep it from moving around inside notice I got more than 90 degrees take your clips take them up there somewhere close to the end squeeze it just a little bit move this and a twist it gives it a real good weak point and all you got to do is go oh it's twisting there we go all you got to do is go like that and she'll break off and you are done. Of course you want to try to get your hole a little bit rounder. You can do that by going around this and squeezing. You can play with it a little bit. This is what it should look like. Get you a nice close up there. I can't tell where the focus is so I'm just going to show it to you as it goes in and out. Thank you very much. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Uh, two-part epoxy. It's actually a plastic epoxy. Lock tight. It's enough to fill the inside of the piston and, and a little bit more. I like the bottom of these soda cans. They work real good. The aluminum cans. They... This is a seven-minute epoxy. I've always found it really important to make sure you fully mix it. One part is still harder, or one part is still all epoxy, and you've got a spot in there that's just sticky and runny and has a hole, and the rest of it's just more of a waste then. So it's seven minutes, I usually take about three or four minutes, but I'm trying to rush this up for the camera. But what I want to do, I want to get this filled up inside there first. Try not to get any on the outside. I found by twisting it you can grab a lot more. 